Free Theater. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the terrifying world of your own imagination. The law says, thou shalt not kill. And that's the law most of us openly acknowledge. Yet, there are other laws. Laws and drives that stir primitive, long-forgotten urges, instincts. Laws that raise murder from the worst of sins to the most satisfying of deeds. Please, 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 let me go. Oh, no. I've got you now, Jim. You have no reason to kill me. We're friends. That's nothing personal, Jim. Why? Why? Why do you want to kill me? A hawk kills a rabbit. Why? Because he has to. It's the law of nature. Frank, you're crazy. Put away that knife. I'm a natural man, Jim. I'm only obeying the law of nature. Kill me! I... <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Diary of a Madman, is based on the story by Guy de Maupassant and was adapted especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Larry Haynes. Homicide is illegal, immoral, and a mortal sin. We condemn and punish the murderer. And yet, from time to time, doesn't an entire nation rise up in righteous anger and slaughter another nation? And so, there are those who, naturally enough, ponder the question. If it's noble to kill for one's country at wholesale, why is it base to kill for oneself at retail? These are the thoughts that occupy the mind of a tall, well-dressed, dignified gentleman. He's walking down a deserted street very late one night in the early summer, some 25 years ago. As he passes a darkened doorway, he hears a gasp. Oh! Oh, what a, what a relief! I beg your pardon. Oh! Is uh, something the matter, Miss? Yeah. Oh, it's only you. Me? Yeah. Yeah, you. I don't believe we know each other, Miss... Uh... Oh, Wilson. Darling Wilson. Oh, my God, it's you. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, you see, I, I took this job at Benji's Diner. My first night at the job. You know the place? No, I can't say that I do. We'll never go there. Oh, what a bunch of creeps. Anyhow, somebody said this street was a shortcut to the bus stop. And I was walking down the street, and I heard these these footsteps coming up right behind me. Well, wouldn't you be scared if you were me? Well, I suppose. Oh, I got so scared. I tried to hide in this doorway. Oh, and it turned out to be you. Well, I'm sorry I frightened you. Oh, forget it. Oh, you're just the kind of person somebody would like to see on a, a lonely, deserted street late at night. Really? Why? Well, you're, you're so well-dressed. That all? Well, look, is it okay if I walk with you as far as the boulevard? I guess it's pretty safe there. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, do you mind if I ask you something? Please do. Uh, I really shouldn't ask strangers such questions, but what's a person like you doing in a neighborhood like this, anyhow? I uh, was looking for somebody. Down here? Yes. What kind of person will you be looking for in this part of town? I mean, it's none of my business, well, in but... a sense, it is your business. It is? Oh. Because, uh... I happen to be looking for a person like you. What? What did you say? A person like you. What... What are you talking about? You see, I... have a certain... Urgent need. Now, listen here, mister. If I was that 
kind of a girl. No, I... no, darling. It's obvious you are not that kind of girl. Well, then, what do you, what do you want from me? I want your life, darling. What are you, what are you saying? <laughs> no, please, get, get out of my way. Oh, no, no darling. Let go of me. Let go. No, I can't, you, darling. You, you can't kill me. I never did anything to you. No, of course not. I don't even know you. There's nothing personal in this, please, darling. Please, I'm scared. Please leave me alone. Uh, please, don't struggle. I won't hurt please. you. It'll be over. <laughs> Very quickly. I don't want to die. Don't breathe. Uh, 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 oh. What? Why did you do that? Uh, help. Help me. Please. Somebody. Help. Help me. Some maniac. Step. I'm not a maniac, darling. To kill is to obey the law of nature. Nature commands all of us to kill. June 29th. I've done it again. And again. It was so easy and exciting. She struggled desperately. I could feel the wild beating of her heart, the hysterical pounding of pulses. And then the climax of the drama. A single thrust of the blade. And once again, no one will ever know. Who could possibly suspect me? Me. The knife. I carefully cleaned and hid it in my desk. There was blood on my lapel. I scrubbed every trace of it away. Morning, Frank. Good morning, dear. Mm, everything smells so good. Mm, you mean you've regained your appetite? Well, I don't know. I'm starved. Oh, that's wonderful. I've been so worried about you lately, Frank. What did the poet say, dearest? Come fill the cup. Well, fill my cup and my plate with doubles of everything. What's come over you? Well, I feel like a brand new man today. How was the banquet last night? Oh, the usual political nonsense. Anyone want you to run for the Senate? Well... As they say, the feelers were out. Hmm. Do we want to live in Washington? Oh, darling, that was a bore. I made an excuse and left early. Oh? Where'd you go? Oh, out for a stroll. Hmm. One of your long walks? Mm-hmm. Clears the mind. Doris took your coat to the cleaners. The lapels were all wet. Yes, I, uh... I tripped and fell to the pavement. Oh, you didn't hurt you? No, 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 I... Landed on some grease or paint or something. I tried to wash it off when I got home. Well, you didn't have to bother. Dara said it looked like blood. Oh, that sounds ominous. Anything in the paper? Oh, the usual mess. Plus a nasty little murder. Oh? Mm. A young girl who worked in a diner. Killed on her way home from work. Oh, killed? Why? How? How? Mm hmm. Stabbed to death on a deserted street. Oh, what a terrible thing. Mm. She was hardly more than a child. How, how would you know that? Well, you said a young girl. Oh, she was just 18. Oh, but why? Oh, I think it'll turn out to be a lover's quarrel. Really? Mm. They picked up her boyfriend. Seems the two of them had been quarreling. About what? Oh, use of the car. Her parents say she was angry because he took it, but he claims it's as much his as hers. Mm. Well, what do they have on the boy? Well, he's got blood stains on his jacket. Oh. Well, that doesn't look good. No. He claims he was out riding around and got into a fight. Oh, with whom? Well, that's the problem. He'd been drinking and can't remember where or with whom. Oh, why do we talk about these things at home, Frank? Isn't it bad enough you have to live with them? <laughs> Although I'm completely above suspicion, I can't afford to be careless. Not that anyone in his wildest dreams would ever suspect. Still, I should be more careful about my clothes. Last time, there were also bloodstains. And yesterday, I'd forgotten to lock my desk drawer. Of course, Estelle never bothers. But still, 
no one should ever read this diary. I, I, I didn't do it. They're lying. They're all lying. Order. Order. Uh, Order, I'll clear this court. The defendant will rise and face the bench. Your Honor, Don't I... you call me your honor, young man. By your conduct, you show no respect for the law or for this court. Judge? Judge Wallace? I, I didn't kill her. Why would I kill her? Why? I, I loved her. Young man, you're being given a fair trial. You have every opportunity to prove your innocence. Judge, please. None of them believe me. What are you saying? Everybody thinks I'm guilty. I can tell. But I was cruising around, and I got into a fight. I, I got the bloodstains that way. I... I got no alibi, but I didn't do it. You'll have to be seated. And we'll proceed in an orderly fashion. Will the attorney for the people continue his cross-examination? Aren't you going to finish your steak, Estelle? You mean you still have room for more? I'm always this way when I'm trying a case. Well, it must take a great deal out of you. Yes, especially this one. Why this one? Oh, I don't know. Frank, that boy is innocent. But still, that's for the jury to decide. No, not completely. It's for you to decide. I think you've decided. How can you say that? By the way you're handling it. Please, Frank, you may not be aware of it, but... Aware of what? Well, you're favoring the prosecutor. Now, that's ridiculous. Well, then... It has to be my imagination. I don't understand why we're even talking about this. We never discuss my it's case. It's just that. Estelle, you're actually pale. What is it? It's... I'm convinced that boy is innocent. Well, if he is innocent, he'll be acquitted. But you know that isn't true. The innocent don't always go free, and the guilty aren't always punished. Still, I've never seen you like this well, before. I know, and I, 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 I just can't account for it. But I, I have this, this conviction. That boy is absolutely innocent. Now, Charlene, this evidence. I don't care about evidence. Now that's irrational. Well, what can I do? I know. Don't ask me how. I just know. That boy is innocent. Well, then there's every chance the jury will agree with you. No, Frank. That's what makes it so terrible. I don't think the jury will agree with me. I had killed before. But this was the first time somebody was going to pay for it. So it was doubly exciting. I had not only killed her, but in a very real sense, I would also be killing him. He was doomed. I could tell. They were a hanging jury if I ever saw one. They didn't like the boy. I could read the verdict in their faces. And so I went out of my way to give them the kind of charge that would be as favorable to the defendant as I could make it. Because I knew that nothing could save him. They stayed out a whole day, all night, and the better part of the next morning. There was never... Any doubt in my mind. Peter Simmons, you have been found guilty. Have you anything to say? I, uh... I was brought up to... believe in God... and to believe in justice. And I can tell you... There's going to be justice one day. Not today, but one day. And the person who killed Darlene will never be forgiven. Thanks for picking me up, dear. Yeah, well, I didn't think I could come to court today, but I couldn't stay away. Did you have to hang him? Darling, it was out of my hands. Mm. The jury wants him executed. There was no recommendation for mercy. 
Do you think he's guilty? We don't think about these things, darling. We hold a trial and hear the evidence, and the jury decides, therefore, he's guilty. Well, I still say he didn't do it. I'm sorry. I heard your summation. You were obviously on his side. November 27th. All of his appeals ran out. He was executed last night. I understand he died very well. But it isn't as if I killed him with my own hands. And it's been a long time. A very long time. Since I obeyed the law of nature. I'm growing restless. Oh, honey, I took so much trouble with that chicken. You haven't even touched it. I'm sorry, dear. Oh, you're out of sorts tonight. Actually, honey, you haven't been yourself all week. You've been working too hard. I have a headache. Oh, well, why don't you lie down? No. I think I'll take a walk. Well, it looks drizzly out. Well, that's uh, just the kind of weather I like. <laughs> Well, you, when you decide on one of your walks, there's nothing I can say to stop you. Put on your rubbers and wear a raincoat. Yes, of course, dear. I don't want to have to worry about you. Walking may be good for some people, but it can be extremely hazardous for others, especially for someone who might just happen to run into Frank Wallace. As Frank walks calmly through the rain-soaked streets, he sees a short, slight figure just up the block. And once again, there is the quickened pulse, the rapid heartbeat, the flushed face, and Frank's fingers tighten around the knife in his pocket. Will you... Franklin K. Wallace is a distinguished judge. He's a credit to the community and an ornament to his profession. So what is he doing out late at night on a dark street in a drizzle and fog with a knife in his pocket? Moving swiftly toward a man who is walking just ahead of him. What? Uh, oh. Hey, well, I'll be. It's Judge Wallace. Evening, Judge. Oh, it's, uh... Uh, Jim Downer, don't you recognize me? Yes, of course. How are you, Downer? Well, I tell you, I'm having a problem. Oh? She says to me, Jim, you're chasing around. And uh, it's true. I am. <laughs> and she says, Jim, you've squandered not just your money, but mine. And it's true, I have. <laughs> and she says, Jim, if you don't quit, I'll leave you or I'll kill you. Either one, maybe both. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, what are you doing out on a night like this, Judge? Just walking. Oh, you don't kid old Jim. Nobody picks a night like this to go just walking. Something's up, huh? Huh, Judge? Well, nothing you'd want to write about in a newspaper, darn it. You know, Judge, I need a story in the worst way. I'm up against a deadline. I don't even have tomorrow's column. How about an idea? Well... How about, uh, murder? Murder? Murder. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Why not? Oh, because it's kind of offbeat, you know? Average person isn't concerned with murder. He doesn't doesn't think about killing. Oh, that's where you're wrong, down Ed. Killing is the law of nature. Every living being has the mission to kill. Well, Judge, I wouldn't exactly say that. Oh, yes, everyone wants to kill. Animals kill ceaselessly every day in order to live. Birds constantly must kill. Well, yeah, but we're not exactly talking we about animals. Or we cause to be killed for our benefit. Well, I, it's, it's kind of a gruesome topic. No, killing is almost the same as creating. To make and to destroy. These concepts are the history of the universe. I, I, well, Judge, it's been great running into you, but I have some people down the line. To kill is the law. All right, if you say so. Because Judge. nature loves eternal youth. The more she destroys, the more she renews herself. Well, I wouldn't doubt that for a minute. Okay, I'll see you. Now, just a second. Huh? What is it? I want to show you something. Here, look. Uh, Judge, 
What are you doing with a knife? We... George, let go of me. Are you crazy? Oh, no, 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 I'm not crazy. We kill animals, but that's not enough to satisfy Now, wait a minute. Long ago, the basic need was met by human sacrifice. Huh? But now, each man must... Help! Help! Quiet. I always treated you fairly, Judge. I always wrote good things about There's you. There's nothing personal in this. Judge. Please, please understand that. It has to be done. Judge. Don't struggle, Jim. It'll be over very quickly. <laughs> by someone, the police maybe. If he wasn't dead, I was doomed. But I didn't have time to make sure. I had to get out of there because I knew I had blood on my coat. I had to get out of there. And I had to get rid of that coat. Frank, where's your coat? Estelle, I don't think you're going to believe me, but I, uh, I gave it away. You what? Yes, you, you know... The legend of the rich man who gives his coat to a beggar? Well, I ran into some poor derelict, and I just gave oh, him... Oh, Frank. What a generous thing to do. Well, not really. The coat was getting old, and I was getting tired of it. And I never really liked it. Oh? Uh, let me tell you the latest news. Mm-hmm. Jim Downers, mm-hmm. the uh, political columnist on the Herald? Yes? What about him? Well, he was found stabbed on the street. Oh, no. Uh-huh. Is, uh, is he dead? He's in a coma. Oh. He was unconscious when the police picked him up. Evidently, he'd been attacked. He'd been screaming for help. Well, uh, will he, uh, will he recover? Well, the police are convinced he'll be able to identify his attacker, but, well, he has to regain consciousness. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, Estelle. Mm-hmm. I, I'd like to go to the hospital. I'd like to see him. Oh. I didn't know you were that close. Well, uh, Jim was, uh, he said he wanted to do a biography on me. Really? Mm -hmm. But you never said anything. Well, it was just in the talk stages. But they probably wouldn't permit visitors. Well, the least I can do is go there and ask if he needs blood. Oh, Frank. That's wonderful. The doctor said, sure, sure, he needs blood. And they took a pint of mine, which I thought was only fitting and proper. And then I asked if I could see Jim. And the doctor said Jim was still in a coma, but I could pop inside for a second. There was a cop stationed outside the door. He saluted me, and I walked into the room. He was lying very still. There were all kinds of tubes attached to various parts of his body. As I leaned over to look at him, he slowly opened his eyes. And I knew, I knew he was going to live, live and destroy me, unless, unless I could do something. I could hear the doctor out in the hall. He was exchanging greetings with the policeman. Quickly, I pulled gently at one of the tubes in his arm. I didn't know what that might do, but it was all I had time for. Do you want some warm milk, honey? No, no, I'll uh, just go to bed. Uh, any news about Jim Donnett? Sorry to have to tell you this, Frank, but came over the radio a few minutes ago. Jim Donnett is dead. Oh. They said he never really had a chance. January 20th. I had discovered something else. In addition to the thrill of killing, there is also the exhilaration that is felt by the victim. Nature is kind. She also gives the one who is doomed the feeling of the drama. I know, because for several hours last night, I could have been a victim. Had Jim Downard lived, well, it taught me a lesson. I should raise the stakes. I shouldn't be so invulnerable. After all, if I am absolutely 100% safe, where is the thrill? Morning, darling. Oh, I see you've prepared a big breakfast. You know, it seems to me 
But every time there's been a murder, you eat a big breakfast the following morning. Oh? How do you account for that? Well, how do you account for this? Police have suspect in downward murder. Have they? Hmm. It's remarkable. It only happened late last night, and they have their man a few hours later. Darling, he's not exactly their man. He's just a suspect. Well, they don't say, but they hint pretty strongly that the evidence against him is rather heavy. Well, now, that's for a jury to decide. I don't know, Frank. I don't think he did it. Oh, no. Here we go again. Well, it's just a feeling. Darling, he'll have his day in court. Well, that doesn't necessarily prove anything. Estelle, are you attacking our system of justice? Did that poor kid, what's his name, uh, Peter Simmons, did, did he get justice? Well, he got a fair trial. Huh. Well, I still believe he's innocent. For all the good that does him now. And I believe this man is innocent, too. Estelle, you don't know what the evidence is. Well, it's is. just a feeling, and it... Well, it just won't go away. Oh, you're being silly. Maybe. I just wish that... You weren't involved. Well, I have to be involved. It's my job. February 23rd. The man's name is Tom Lewis. 30 years old. He has a previous record. He did time for robbery and again for assault. I don't think his chances are too good. He doesn't have a very good story either. Well, I was just walking along down the street, see? And I, uh, I thought I heard somebody yell. Yell for help. So, 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 so I, I wasn't going to me- get mixed up in it, see? But it was foggy. And I couldn't see, you know? And I, I guess I must have tripped over him. I could see he was dead. Or good as dead. And there was blood. There was blood all over him. And that's how it got over me. And, and the money... Well, all right. I figured as long as he's dead anyhow, he might have a couple of bucks on him. So I... I, I, I reached into his pocket. Uh, Your Honor, we should like the jury to examine this $50 bill. Listen, I'm not denying I took the money. Order, order. But somebody else had already knocked him off. The accused will remain seated and orderly. Well, I'm being framed. Mr. Lewis, I will not warn you again. The court cannot tolerate these outbursts. But I didn't kill him. February 25. I see now each of my murders has been a masterpiece. I feel like an artist. With this difference, I cannot accept credit for my work. Well, perhaps the day will come when a man will be honored for a superlative job such as I can do. Meanwhile, I'm not exactly being cheated. No one else wants to take credit for my work either. That's a consummation. Estelle? Yes, Frank? Well, now, what are you doing sitting here in the dark? Is it dark? I hadn't noticed. Well, did you fall asleep? No. Well, let me turn on the light. There. That's better. Well, what a day. Did you hear about it on the news? No. Uh, The boy. He uh, isn't doing his case much good with all those outbursts. Would you like to go somewhere for dinner? I don't feel like eating out. Oh, well, that's all right. I just assume. The truth is, I don't feel like eating at all. What's wrong? That's a good question. How can I answer it? Estelle. I don't have the faintest idea of what to say or what to think. About what? About everything. Darling, I wish I knew what you were talking about. But there's really nothing I have to tell you. You're the one who has to tell me. I always tell you everything. I was paying the bills today. Oh. Well, that's enough to get anybody down. And, um, I ran out of blank checks. Oh? I remember... Yes? That, uh, that you always have an extra book of checks in your desk drawer. Oh. But you always keep it locked. Yes, that's right. I do. I thought... Maybe this time. You might have left it open. Estelle, I never go through your things. We always respected each other's privacy. But the drawer just happened to be open. And I found this little book. 
And, uh, did you read it? Yes. Yes, Frank, I read it. Every single word of it. Did you tell anyone about it? No, Frank. I've told no one. Well, that's good. That's very good to know. Frank. <laughs> Would you like to poke innocently through your husband's desk and come up with a diary like the one you've been listening to? Well, you could say she's twice foolish. First, to find the diary, and second, to let him know it. a series of particularly brutal murders. You are the wife of a distinguished jurist who has presided over most of the trials and sent the supposedly guilty to death. Now, you find a diary in which your husband claims that he is the killer. Frank, what are you going to do? What do you mean, what am I going to do? Well, you, you kill those people. This, this boy... This one who's on trial now for the murder of Jim Downard. He's innocent. No, dear, he's guilty. But I just read your confession. And Peter Simmons, who was hanged for killing his sweetheart. Well, you... You admit you killed her. Darling, please sit down. You're becoming hysterical. That's right. That's right, I am. I... I have every right to become... Estelle, please, will you listen? But to what? To the truth. I've just read the truth. Darling, listen. Now, for many years, I wanted to write a book. What? Now, will you please just listen? <sighs> you don't have to say anything until I'm finished. I have been fascinated by the criminal mind. And so, after a particularly brutal, apparently senseless murder is committed, I try to place myself in the mind of the killer. What does he think? That's the way you put it. Murder is is obedience to a natural law. That's poetic license, dear. What do you mean? We kill, not for gain. Oh, we think we do. We think we kill for money or for passion, but the truth is, these are just pretexts. That oh. we kill because, because of an ancient urge. And when the urge becomes strong enough, we take advantage of any pretext that comes up. But I'm not aware of this uh, urge. And neither am I, dear. It's been refined and civilized out of us, but there are lower types. You see, the Tom Lewis's, but the Pete why? Simmons. why? Why what? I... Oh, I don't know. Estelle, do you believe that I killed these people? Well, there it was in your own handwriting. Oh, Estelle, Estelle, could you actually believe me capable of murder? I don't know. It was such a shock, and I... I was so frightened. Darling, darling, we've been married 20 years. Don't you know all there is to know about me? I thought I did. And then I... Well, I... I happened to remember certain things. I, like what? Well, each time there's been one of those murders, you... You just happened to be out walking. Well, there was such a thing as coincidence. And, and when that girl was killed... Well, you... You did have stains on your coat. Oh, darling... Would, would you hang me on circumstantial evidence? Well, you hung Peter Simmons on circumstantial evidence? And circumstantial evidence is tightening the noose around Tom Lewis's neck every day. Do you mean you seriously believe? <sighs> no. I believe you. Well, that's better. I believe you. Because I... I have no alternative. February 27. How could I have been so stupid? Why did I leave that drawer unlocked? I'm sure there are psychologists who would say that I want to be caught, but that's ridiculous. Does she believe me? Does she? Or... Do I have to... Kill her? Still. Now that... That would be testing the law, the natural law. Can you kill a loved one? Because I do love Estelle. 
That would be the highest obedience to the law. To kill the one you love. Very well, Mr. Lewis. You expect this court to believe that you just stumbled across Mr. Downard's body in the dark? It, it's the truth. He had already been attacked by someone else. Yes. He was still alive. I... I... I think so. You insist you heard him cry for help. That's right, that's right. Someone had just attacked him, see? And he's the one who killed him. Yeah, but we don't know that he cried for help. All we have is your word for it. But it happened, I tell you, and... uh, And... Yes? What? What did you want to say? Mr. Lewis, you must answer the prosecutor's question. What happened? Uh, Yes, uh, yes, well, well, it was foggy. But you see, just as I got there, I, uh... I, I I saw somebody. You saw somebody? Right, right. I could see somebody running away. And could you describe that somebody? He was tall. Very tall. There's no mention of this somebody in any of your previous statements? Well, that's because I, I, I was nervous. See, I couldn't think, but now... Yes? Well, well, now, as I go over it again and again in my mind, I remember. There was somebody, see, a tall guy. And he was running away. I mean, I can even remember his footsteps. His footsteps. And so now you expect us to believe that the murder was committed by a certain mysterious somebody. I expect you to believe the truth. I think we already know the truth. You heard about today's testimony, Estelle? Yes. He claims that a tall, mysterious stranger was running away from the scene. Yes, I know about it. I was uh, out walking that night. You were? And I'm tall. Exceptionally tall. Yes. And if you want to add to it, I came home without my coat. Now, why would I do that? To get rid of it. And why would I want to get rid of my coat? Because of the blood stains, naturally. Oh, please, Frank. How are we going to live with this, Estelle? You suspect me of being a killer. I never said You don't have to say. I can tell by your face, by the tone of your voice, you suspect me. I don't know. I don't know what to think. Well, if you think I'm a killer, shouldn't you want to stop me? How? Even if I believed it, who would believe me? I'm sorry, Estelle. I'm sorry for both of us. I should have never written a book like that, and you should never have read it. I don't know what kind of life we can have together. You'll never know the truth. But I I will, Frank, I will. I found a way to determine the truth. Well, how? How could you? The truth is in your diary. I read your diary very closely, and I found a way. I found a way. you? That's not important, Tom Lewis. How'd you get in here? It wasn't easy. Now, what do you want? I want to save you. (laughs) Yeah, why? Listen, I pulled a lot of wires to get into this prison. I'm the only chance you've got. Who are you kidding? I got no chance at all. Unless you can work a miracle. How are you at uh, miracles, huh, lady? Just pull yourself together. You have a job to do. Now, look, lady, I don't know who you are, what you want, but it ain't going to work. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Now, just tell me, was there or was there not a tall man who ran away as you approached? Yeah, yeah, I told the prosecutor. Now, you you just didn't make that up in the desperate hope someone might believe it. Lady, I don't have to lie. I got nothing to lose. There was someone. Tall? Yeah. Yeah, tall guy. And that's all you could say about him? Well, he was tall and kind of athletic looking, you know. Good build, and he moved. He moved fast. I see. Hey, lady. (laughs) Hey, what's the matter? Come on, what are you crying about? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Now, do you want to be cleared of the murder charge? Huh. Just like that, huh? Well, almost. Why should I be cleared? Because tomorrow you'll stand up in court and admit you killed as 
admit you killed Jim Downard. Oh, great. And that's going to clear me? Yes. Oh, lady, why don't you leave me alone, huh? I got it tough enough now. Do as I tell you. You mean you want me to just jump up and holler, I killed him, I killed him? Yes, and then you'll go on and... And this is what else you'll tell them. And so, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you've heard all the testimony, seen all the evidence, and now it's up to you to decide whether the accused, Tom Lewis, is guilty as charged of the crime of murder. They don't have to decide. There will be order in this court. Order. I mean, what's to decide? I'm guilty. Hey, here we Order! Order! The prisoner will be seated. I'm guilty. Guilty, you see? I don't care what those clowns on the jury think. I killed him. I killed Jim Donard. I killed him, and I'm proud of it. That's it. I'm proud of it. Sure, sure, I killed him. What's wrong with that? Everybody killed sooner or later. We're all killers, you see? I killed him because I couldn't help myself. I said be seated. Didn't you ever want to kill somebody, Judge, huh? Didn't you? I'll have you removed from this court. What do I care? I killed him. And I also killed that woman last year, you know? That Darlene, right? Darlene, what's her name? I killed her, and her boyfriend swung for it. You did not. I did. I did. I can still feel the, the wild beating of her heart, you see? The hysterical pounding of her pulse. And then you stab. You stab with a knife. You didn't kill her. I killed her. And I killed Tom Downard. You can't take that away from me. Don't anybody try to take it away from me. Silence. I won't be silent. I killed because I had to. I had to obey the law. The natural law. Nature commanded me to kill. That's a lie. You're a cheap little punk. What would you know about nature's laws? What would an ignorant hoodlum like you know about nature's law? What would an illiterate clod like you know about the dark, hidden places in the human soul? What would you know about the bloody imperatives of the race? I know. I killed both of them. You're a liar. You didn't kill anybody. I did. I killed Darlene Wilson, and I killed Jim Donnett, and I can prove it. Right. Ah, now, you, now you know, Estelle. Now you know I did it. And they weren't cheap little crimes of passion. They were obedience to the elemental law. You know that's the truth, Estelle. Show them the book. Show everybody the book. Well, they were all set to throw the book at ex-judge Frank Wallace. But, of course, the plea was insanity. And if it proves anything at all... It demonstrates that no one should try to steal credit from a true artist. No one else should ever try to pose as the author of his works. Even if those works are concerned with murder. You've heard them say, murder will out. It's supposed to mean that murder cannot be hidden. The fact will eventually emerge. However... The tale you just heard adds a chilling dimension to that statement. It can now mean that murder may slumber deep inside each of us and that one day it may find its way out. No, no, that won't do. Better enjoy murder vicariously with us. That way, you'll never be tempted or driven. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Evie Juster... Robert Dryden, and William Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>